Okay, well, thank you very much, for everyone, for um, uh, enrolling and uh, joining us today for the third of our Did You Know series. Today's webinar is Employment Law for Community Workers. I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. My name is Teresa Kelly. I'm the Project Manager for the Respected Work Legal Service at Legal Aid New South Wales. I'm here with Alyssa Conager from the Legal Aid New South Wales Employment Law team, who will be presenting this webinar. This series of webinars has been created in response to what the community told us that they needed to know about when we were visiting the regions and speaking to organisations that volunteers, sorry, and volunteers who support palm and migrant workers. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which we are broadcasting today. I'm broadcasting from the land of the Gadigal people of the Aurora Nation. We pay our respects to the elders of this land, both past and present, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people attending today's webinar or watching the recording at a later date. As a reminder, this presentation is intended for general information only and cannot be relied on as legal advice. The information is accurate at the time and the date of broadcasting, but it may have changed if you're watching the recording at a later date. If you need legal help about a particular situation, start with our team at Law Access on 1300 529 or via web chat at www.legalaid.newsouthwales.gov.au. The employment law team here at Legal Aid New South Wales helps people with issues that they have at work, including when they lose their job unfairly or they've not been paid correctly. Today's presenter on the subject of employment law is Alyssa Conager. Alyssa is a paralegal in Legal Aid New South Wales employment law team. She's completed a double degree in law and computer science at the University of New South Wales and has worked with the employment team at Legal Aid here for over a year. I'll now hand you over to your presenter, Alyssa, from the employment law team. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you, even virtually. Just give me a moment. I'm going to share my screen because I have a couple slides. Okay, so I'm hoping everybody can see that screen now. Um, great. Okay, if not, just let me know. Um, but otherwise, I'll just crack on because we do have a little bit to cover today. I am hoping to finish a little bit earlier, but uh, we'll see how we go. So just before I begin, um, I'd also like to acknowledge that I'm recording this meeting um, and presenting it from the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And I uh, also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all work today. Um, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging uh, and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands and waters of New South Wales. So um, like Teresa introduced, um, I work for the employment law team. I've worked with them for about a year and today I'll be giving a quick summary about workplace rights in Australia. Um, so a little bit about who we are. Um, We've covered most of this, but um, yeah, the employment law team is one of the teams here at Legal Aid New South Wales, where a small group of lawyers who give free legal advice um, to workers about their problems at work. So we can help you if you have a problem at work, such as an issue with your pay or if you lose your job. Um, and the most important part of this presentation is that number right there. So that's 1300 888 529. And that is the number for law access, which is how you can get in contact uh, with us at Legal Aid. So um, if you have a pen and paper or something to write down that number, um, that is definitely the most important thing to get down out of this presentation. So I'll leave that up there just for a second. Okay, um, the number will appear a couple of other times in the presentation. So hopefully you get that down. 
So the way that I've structured this presentation today is just to go through um, a couple of common uh, misconceptions about employment law in Australia. Um, and so they're going to be phrased like true or false questions. And I'll uh, just go through whether or not these statements are true or false and um, what is the state of the current law in Australia about these things. So um, the first one is... I am a casual worker and my friend is a full-time worker, but we both get paid the same hourly rate. Is this correct? So this is false. Um, in Australia, if you work as what's called a casual worker, you're paid more than full-time or part-time workers, usually about 25% more on your hourly rate. Um, however, full-time workers and also part-time workers have some worker rights that casuals do not. So I'll just go briefly over some of those differences. So for full-time or part-time workers, uh, some of your working rights include, uh, firstly, you have what's called an advanced commitment to ongoing employment, which is just a fancy way of saying that um, your employer has promised you um, future consistent employment. Um, so that means that you can expect to work regular hours each week. It also means that you get um, a certain amount of sick leave and annual leave. So if you get sick and need to go to a doctor's appointment or are going on holiday, you can still get paid for those days that you're away. Um, it also means that your boss has to give you notice when they're going to um, dismiss you from your job. And it also means that you have to give notice if you want to leave your job. Um, and the amount of notice can depend on how long you've been working that job. Um, as for casuals, um, if you don't have a firm advanced commitment to ongoing work. Um, you also don't get any paid sick leave or annual leave. So you may take a day off um, because you're sick, but um, you won't get paid for that day. Um, it also means that you don't get any notice when you lose your job. However, because of this uncertainty, because your job is a little bit less stable and secure in comparison to a full-time or a part-time worker, you are compensated for this through your hourly rate. So your hourly rate is going to be more than a full-time or a part-time worker doing the same job that you're doing. Okay, so we're gonna move on um, to the next one. So migrant workers have less rights at work than Australian citizens. So this is uh, false. All employees in Australia, regardless of your visa status, get the same rights at work under what's called the National Employment Standards. So currently in Australia, there are 12 of those standards. So 12 minimum entitlements that you're um, entitled to um, because of the fact that you work in Australia. And it doesn't matter the fact that you've come from another country or that you're currently on a temporary visa, you're still entitled to these 12 rights. Um, just, uh, just to explain something about these rights, um, some of these rights apply to casuals um, and some of them don't. For example, annual leave and sick leave don't apply to casuals. Um, and so what I'll do now is I will briefly go over what those 12 standards are. I won't be able to go through um, all of the detail, um, but I'll be able to give kind of a brief overview um, of each of those 12 rights under Australian law. Um, if you have any questions about a particular one of these um, entitlements or standards, uh, you should try and contact us at the number that I provided earlier. So the first national employment standard is about maximum weekly hours. So usually that's 38 hours per week for a full-time employee. Um, and it also means that um, an employee can refuse to work additional hours if they're unreasonable. Um, so for example, um, one reason why hours might be unreasonable is because they're unsafe, because you're not getting enough sleep or rest between your working hours to do the job well and not injure yourself or others. 
Um, the second standard that I'll talk about is requests for flexible working arrangements. And this basically means that um, after 12 months, you can ask your boss to change your hours, your pattern or your location of work if you fall into any of these categories. So if you're a parent um, and your child is of school age or younger, if you're a carer, if you're a person with a disability, if you're 55 years or older, if you're pregnant, um, if you're experiencing domestic violence, or if you're helping someone, for example, a family member who is also experiencing domestic violence. Um, the next ones we'll go through is offers and requests to convert from casual to permanent employment. So if you're a casual, um, but you think that you no longer fit within the definition of a casual worker, um, meaning that you get regular shifts all of the time and your boss tells you, um, you know, when and how to work and you can't refuse any of your shifts, um, then you might be able to ask your boss if you can become a permanent worker. Um, I would say of all of the standards we're going to talk about today, this one is probably the most complicated. And that's only because recently the law has changed about what the meaning of casual is and how a casual can become a permanent um, employee. So if you're not sure if you're a casual or if you think, um, you know, maybe I might be able to become a permanent employee, um, you should definitely get legal advice about this because of those recent changes to the law. Um, the fourth national employment standard is parental leave and also those related entitlements. So um, if you've worked for at least 12 months with your employer, you may be able to take unpaid parental leave for 12 months and you, can, uh, you may be able to extend that leave for another 12 months. Um, then there's annual leave. So as I mentioned before, everybody gets annual leave except for casuals. Um, Full-time and part-time employees get four weeks of annual leave based on uh, their ordinary hours of work. So for example, if you're a part-time employee and you only work two days a week, then you get a total of eight days of annual leave per year. Um, and if you're a shift worker, which has a very specific definition under Australian law, you can get an extra annual, an extra week of annual leave per year. Um, the next standard has um, a bunch of uh, entitlements grouped together. So personal and carers leave, compassionate leave and family and domestic violence leave. So as a short summary, uh, you get 10 days um, of paid personal or carer's leave uh, per year, and that's pro rata for part-time employees, um, which means that, say, you only work two out of five days per week, so you'd only get four days of paid personal leave per year compared to the 10 that a full-time employee would get. Um, you can also get two days of unpaid carer's leave as required. So, for example, if you're... Um, your child is sick and you need to take them, take them to the hospital and stay with them there for a night, um, you might be able to take two days of unpaid carer's leave. Um, there's two days of compassionate leave. So for example, if someone uh, such as a close family member passes away, um, and there's also 10 days of paid family and domestic violence leave. So if you are trying to get yourself out of um, a domestic violence situation um, and need to take leave, um, then you can avail of those 10 days, which you get for every 12 month period of your employment. Uh, then there's community service leave. So community service leave is unpaid for voluntary emergency activities. So these are things like volunteering for uh, the Rural Fire Service. Um, and you get up to 10 days of paid leave if you're called for jury duty. Um, and then after those 10 days, it's unpaid. Um, then there's long service leave. So um, long service leave can differ from state to state. Um, in New South Wales, full-time, part-time and casuals can get long service leave. Um, and the general rule is that if you've been working for your employer for 
10 years, then you're entitled to two months of paid leave. So that's approximately 8.67 weeks of paid leave. Uh, then there's public holidays. So full-time and part-time employees who don't work a public holiday get paid their ordinary rate for hours they would have worked. So for example, if you're a full-time employee, um, then um, a couple of weeks ago when it was Labor Day, you would have gotten paid for that Monday, even though you didn't work it. Um, casuals don't get paid, however, if they don't work a public holiday. Um, but if you do work a public holiday, um, an award or another agreement or even your contract may provide what's called a penalty rate for working public holidays. So a penalty rate means you get paid extra above your ordinary hours rate. So um, for a public holiday that can be sometimes two or two and a half times more than your ordinary hours rate. Then there's superannuation contributions. So your boss has to pay super contributions of 11.5% of your ordinary time earnings if you are over 18 years old or alternatively, or alternatively if you're under 18 and you work over 30 hours a week. Um, and it's important that even if you're a casual, you should still um, receive super contributions from your boss. Um, the other important thing to know is that the percentage of super, so currently it's 11.5%, does change year to year. It often goes up. Um, and so um, it should go up uh, according to the changes made by the law. There's a notice of termination and redundancy pay. Um, again, this applies more specifically to full-time and part-time workers. So full-time and part-time workers should get notice if their job is terminated. Um, in terms of notice, um, you can get up to four weeks, depending on how long you've worked for um, your employer. And you get an extra week if you're over 45 years old and you've worked for over two years. Um, and you may be entitled to a redundancy um, and the amount that you get paid for your redundancy will depend on how long your service was with your employer um, and that can go up to as high as 16 weeks of pay. Um, so casuals and also employees of small businesses don't get redundancy pay. And then there's the Fair Work Information Statement and Casual Employment Information Statement, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, but basically, both of these statements, um, they outline your basic working rights so that you know what they are before or at the beginning of when you start your job. So all employees in Australia should give every new employee a copy of the Fair Work Information Statement and if that employee is going to be a casual, a copy of the casual employment information statement. So if you've never seen either of these statements before, um, you can look them up online. There's copies available and they give um, a really easy to understand summary of your basic working rights in Australia. So those are um, in total the 12 national employment standards. Um, it is important to emphasize that they are minimum entitlements, which means that you may be entitled to more under a contract or an award or an enterprise agreement, but those are set as the national minimum standards for all Australian workers. Um, okay, so we might move on to the next one. Um, my boss can decide how much they pay me. So this is false. You should be paid at least the national, minimum, the national minimum wage. Sorry, that's a bit of a mouthful. And you may need to be paid a higher rate depending if you're covered by an award or if you've signed a contract or if there's an enterprise agreement that applies to your employment. So what is the national minimum um, wage? Currently, uh, as of the 1st of July of this year, it's $24.10, which means that if you're over 21 years old, then you should be paid at least $24.10 for every hour that you work. 
so um, a while ago, I briefly mentioned awards. Um, you may have heard of awards before, but in case anyone in the audience um, hasn't heard about awards, uh, awards are essentially legal documents that tell you the minimum terms and conditions of your job on top of the national employment standards. Um, not every job is covered by an award, but lots and lots and lots of jobs in Australia are covered by awards because there are over 100 awards in total. Um, and awards generally are based on the industry that you work in. So, for example, there's an award for aged care, there's an award for hospitality, there's an award for uh, people who work in cleaning services, um, and many, many more. And in terms of what your award can tell you, it can tell you a host of things, including um, how much you should be paid, what kind of hours you should work, so when and for how long, um, when and how you should know about your rosters, so how far in advance, um, and how many hours you should be rostered for, um, any breaks that you should get, so how many and if they're paid, any allowances that you get, so for example, uniform allowances, vehicle allowances, laundry al allowances, um, they can all apply to different industries. Um, as I mentioned before, penalty rates, so those typically apply for weekends, working Saturdays or Sundays and public holidays. Uh, and then finally, overtime. So watch your maximum weekly hours are and what overtime rates might apply. Um, if you've never heard of awards before and you think you might be covered by an award, uh, if you look up Fair Work uh, FWO, which stands for Fair Work Ombudsman, find my award, um, they have a really easy to fill in questionnaire that can help you um, see what your award is. Alternatively, you can ask your boss or look at your contract to see if, it's, if it mentions anything about award coverage. So just kind of as a brief example of the kind of information you can find um, under an award. So for example, this is the fast food award. So it applies obviously to fast food employees. Um, and under awards, there are typically different um, classifications. So typically levels. So the example that I've picked here is a level one employee who works full time and is 21 years and over. And it says that the minimum um, hourly rate is $25.65. So you can see that's already higher than the national minimum wage. And you can see all of the penalty rates that apply. So um, working from 10 p.m. to midnight, working from midnight to 6 a.m., working public holidays and weekends. And then it also shows what the overtime rates that are that apply for this job are. So um, the first two over the first two hours of overtime get paid at uh, $38.48. Then after two hours, it gets bumped up to $51. Um, and also overtime for Sundays and public holidays are different. So um, learning about what award you might be covered by I can tell you a lot about um, what your working rights are um, and what your pay rates should be in particular. Okay, the next one we're going to go through is um, my boss said that because he pays me in cash, he doesn't need to give me pay slips. So again, this is false. Um, your boss is allowed to pay you in cash. That is legal in Australia, but that doesn't mean that your boss um, doesn't need to give you pay slips. In fact, it's a legal requirement under Australian law for your boss to give you pay slips. So I'm just going to briefly go through what's required um, to be in your pay slip. Um, so in your pay slip, this is an example of what your pay slip should have, all of the information it should include. So things that your pay, pay slip should definitely have is your name, your employer's name, your employer's ABN, if they have one, the pay period, so if you get paid for the fortnight or for the week or for the month, the date that you receive the payment, your gross and net pay, so what your pay is before and after tax. Um, if you're paid an hourly rate, it should say 
what's your ordinary hourly rate, the number of hours that you work at that rate, and the total dollar amount of pay at that rate. And it should also have information about things like loadings. So for example, if you get annual leave loading, um, any deductions to your pay, as well as superannuation. So that 11.5% contribution on your ordinary um, on your ordinary earnings that your employer is obliged to contribute to your super. So you can see that there's actually a lot of information that's supposed to be in your pay slip. And that's really to make sure um, that you can see that you're being paid correctly. And if for whatever reason you find out that you're not being paid correctly, um, you're able to rectify that because you, you know all the information from your pay slip. Um, you should also know that you should get your pay slip within one day of payday. So the day after you get paid, you should receive your pay slip from your boss. Um, if you aren't currently receiving pay slips, you can tell your employer that it is a requirement for them to, to, to give you your pay slips um, and you are allowed to ask for them um, so that you can see what you've been paid. In terms of how you can be paid, you can be paid in one or a combination of any of the following. So like I said before, um, it is lawful in Australia to be paid in cash um, as long as you still get pay slips. Um, you can also be paid through check, money order or postal order, although um, that's relatively old fashioned now and quite uncommon, um, but still legal. And there's also much more commonly electronic funds transfer, so a direct transfer to your bank account. And then in terms of when you should be paid, if your award covered, your award is most likely going to tell you when you should get paid, whether that's fortnightly or weekly or monthly. But if you're not covered by an award and your award or your award doesn't say when you should get paid, um, then you should be paid at least monthly. Okay, so I was paid incorrectly in the past, but there is no way for me to get this money back. So this can happen that um, you might realize from looking at your pay slips or talking to a friend that you've been underpaid and then your boss goes, well, that's in the past, we can't fix that now. But this is false. So um, if you are underpaid, you have six years from the day that you were supposed to receive the money to get this money back from your boss. Um, so six years is what's called um, the statutory limit, which means um, the legal amount of time that you're allowed to make a claim for your underpayment. So we may be able to help you get this money back. Um, if you think that you've been underpaid, you can call us at that number, 1300 888 or email us uh, at employmentlaw at legalaid.nsw.gov.au. Okay, and then um, my boss can fire me if I complain too much about my pay or other rights at work. Um, this might seem fairly obvious, but um, this is false. So your boss can't fire you just because you make a complaint about any of your rights at work. Um, so what's really important about this is that um, if your boss does fire you um, because you make a complaint at work about your pay or because you try and take some sick leave um, and you think that it's unfair, uh, you only have 21 days to make an application to the Fair Work Commission about your unfair dismissal. Um, it's really important to know about this time limit because if you don't put in an application after 21 days, it can become much, much, much harder um, to, to put in an application. Um, so, if you have been dismissed and you think that it was unfair and you'd like some legal advice within those 21 days after your dismissal, you should uh, give us a ring um, at that number or alternatively send us an email. So just some examples of um, what it might mean to lose your job unfairly. 
So some examples might include if your boss doesn't give you any warnings or call you into any meetings before you lose your job, you just kind of get fired on the spot um, and um, without any kind of pre previous um, previous attempts to tell you about your performance or things like that. Uh, the second is if your boss says that you did something wrong at work, but it's not true, whether that's because somebody else did it or somebody made it up. Um, you're losing your job unfairly may also include if you lose your job because of a personal characteristic of yours. So, for example, because of your race or your disability, your age, your sex, your pregnancy, or the fact that you have children to take care of. Um, and it's also unfair if you lose your job because you're away um, because of some sort of illness or injury you get or because you go on workers' compensation or um, you try and ask your boss if you can get workers' compensation. Okay, so that's almost the end of the presentation. Um, I just wanted to give you some direction in case you want to learn a little bit more um, so there's lots of tools online um, that you can use to um, kind of learn more about some of the things that we've talked about today. Um, the things that I'll direct you to specifically are um, the PACT tool. So that stands for the Pay and Conditions tool. Um, it's, um, it's developed by the Fair Work Ombudsman. Um, and on the tool, there's a pay calculator, a leave calculator, a notice and redundancy calculator and a shift calculator. So if you want to know, you know, what's my annual leave entitlements under the national employment standards or what's my pay supposed to be under a particular award, um, you can use this tool. It's relatively easy to um, use. You just put in when you started, when you finished. Um, what your award is um, and it will kind of calculate the rest for you. Um, so it's very useful if you want to uh, have a look and see whether or not you've been underpaid or if your pay slips are correct. Um, then if you're concerned about long service leave, um, maybe you're close to that 10 year mark um, or you're, you're over that 10 year mark, um, you can have a look at the New South Wales long service leave calculator and it will um, show you if you're entitled to long service leave, and if so, how much? Um, like I said, long service leave will depend on the length of your service. Um, and if you've taken breaks throughout that period, some breaks may count to your service and some breaks may not count to your service. Um, so that calculator can help you um, assess if you're you're close to being able to avail of long service leave. And like I said, importantly, long service leave does depend from state to state. So it's important that you look at the New South Wales website for that one. If you think that you've been unfairly dismissed, so um, you know your boss has fired you for a reason that you think is unfair or invalid, um, you can look up the Fair Work Bench Book. Um, there are two bench books you might want to have a look at the General Protections Bench Book and Unfair Dismissals Bench Book. Um, and this can just be a brief guide. It is meant um, for non-lawyers, just ordinary people who wanna learn more about um, unfair dismissals. Um, and it can go, it goes through briefly kind of what counts as unfair dismissal, how you make an application, what's the application process like. Um, and then, of course, Legal Aid also has some resources. So if you type in um, Legal Aid problems about my job, um, we have some information there about what to do if you lose your job uh, and what to do if you have questions about your wage or your entitlements. And then finally, in terms of who you can contact, so there's if you think you've lost your job unfairly, you can contact the Fair Work Commission. Um, I've put everybody's number and email on the screen there. Um, alternatively, if you want some legal advice from a lawyer, you can give us a ring at our number 1300 888 529. Um, alternatively, if you have some question about um, your pay or underpayment, you can also call the Fair Work Ombudsman. Um, and the number is there too, 13 13 94. 
So that's pretty much all I have for the presentation. Uh, we did finish much earlier than I expected, um, but thank you very much for listening. Um, I haven't quite checked the Q&A, so perhaps there are questions there. As Teresa said earlier, um, we'll collate all those questions and um, send you an email with all the answers. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you, I didn't Lisa. Know yeah. Can I just get you to go back to that last slide so we can just put that up to make sure that everyone's got um, those numbers written down? Yeah, but um, thanks, Teresa. Well, thank you. That was information that absolutely every worker should know, especially for our migrant and palm workers, um, having the same right, rights at work as every other employee in Australia. I thought that was really important, and I'm definitely going to be downloading that Fair Work Information Statement flyer. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for participating in today's survey, and just a reminder, you'll get a, an evaluation survey um, after the webinar finishes and we'd really appreciate your feedback. Um, you'll also get an email with the answers from the Q&A section and the information about the resources that Alyssa spoke about today in the webinar. Um, the series has, has been developed in response to community needs and there's still time to register for the next week's presentation, which is workplace sexual harassment and discrimination, the role of legal aid local officers and the work directions order unit. Uh, and the week after is the Australian Human Rights Commission. The first, the recording of our first two webinars on immigration law and safe work in New South Wales are now up on the Legal Aid YouTube channel, and today's pres presentation will be uploaded soon. Um, again, thank you very much for attending. Um, Alyssa's got the numbers up there for you um, if you need to access us. Um, Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Alyssa, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Thanks, Teresa.